Hi YouTube. We're back with another video on the Smith & Wesson MMP 10mm 4 inch newly released firearm. Got my hands on somehow, luckily. Uh, we got a few videos stitched together to make one big long one here. We ran a whole bunch of different ammo through it. You'll see what we do. First of all, thank you for everybody who watched the first video. Appreciate the comments. Keep them coming. We all need to help each other here in this world when it comes to new firearms that manufacturers don't really want to tell us much about. So all the comments are great. We all together have years and years of experience we can all share with each other. So first thing I want to say about, uh, give you a couple disclaimers, I suppose, in these videos here. These are advertised velocities, velocities that I'm talking about. Um, it's what's in the book or it's what's on the box. I haven't chronographed any of these loads. I will eventually. I just limit it on time right now, and we can trust that they're pretty close. I know it's a four-inch barrel, so we're not totally sure, but I think we can be pretty, pretty satisfied with what's published. Uh, I interchange extreme defender and extreme penetrator quite a lot. It just gets confusing in my head. They used to make an extreme cavitator. They make an extreme hunter, I think. I don't know. I can't keep it straight anymore. What it really is is extreme defender. That's what I'm using. I have extreme penetrator, but for this video, I'm using extreme defender. Um, I use the word stovepipe a couple times. I know it's not the correct term for the malfunction. It's not a true stovepipe because it happens with a live round. It's a failure to feed. You'll see later in the video. It's a failure to feed a particular round out of the magazine. It's the magazine and it's me being a goofball with 40 caliber ammunition. It's not a true stovepipe. It's a magazine or bullet malfunction because it's not intended to shoot that round. Uh, sorry it gets a little dark at the end of the video. We were running out of light, but I wanted to bring this to you. You guys need this information, so I just wanted to get as many rounds as I could to this firearm, as many different loadings, and show you guys what was going on, but it does get pretty dark at the end. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, I do shoot with one eye closed. Sometimes I shoot with two eyes open. With a rifle, red dot, sure. With pistols, I've never been able to get used to two eyes open. It's just how I shoot. I can't change. I can't shoot with two eyes uh, open. So, sorry. That's just my, my glitch. Some people have to get over that. Some people understand. Sorry the turkeys. Sorry they didn't make an appearance today. They got a little worried. I mentioned 10 gauge earlier. I asked them about it. And once they heard 10 gauge, I didn't really see much of them after that. So, sorry we don't have any turkeys today. Do turkeys love 10 gauges? <laughs> Tried to make sure I didn't limp wrist this firearm at all today. I, there was a couple comments. People asked, you know, could some of the malfunctions be limp wristing? Of course they could be. 10 millimeter is a tough round to handle sometimes, especially in some of the hotter loadings like Underwood. Of course I can limp wrist it. Um, I don't think that I am. I'm a pretty experienced shooter. I shoot primarily hot rounds, heavy calibers. I love revolvers. I really don't think that I'm a limp wrister, but of course it can happen. You'll see my hand, you know, my bounce grip might bounce around in the gun a little bit. That's what happens with 10 millimeter. Anybody that shoots it understands your grip bounces around a little bit on a 10 millimeter. We have to admit that it is, it is not a nine millimeter. Um, and I'm new to editing. So thanks for putting up with some of my choppy editing. Uh, I'll get better at it in the future, but Thanks for putting up with it for now. Uh, and final disclaimer before we get out there shooting is this is all done on a closed private range. Again, a closed private personal, my own range with backstops and inclines. Um, the bullets stay on my property. It's a safe closed private range. Welcome to the reloading bench. Here's what we got going on here. We're going to make a few different loadings here today. The projectiles we're going to use are Extreme Bullet, 180 grain, flat point, full metal jacket, or copper washed, whatever you want to call it. And also some Spear Gold Dot, 180 grain. Uh, I can't find any Gold Dot in the stores. I can't find any defensive 10 millimeter ammo anywhere right now going looking for it. So we'll just try to make some of our own. We use these Extreme Bullets uh, along with the Remington Primers and the Tight Group the other day. 5.4 grains of Tight Group. Uh, Got approximately 10, 50 feet per second. It seemed to like that. So we're going to try to recreate that again, but with a different powder. We're going to go to powder pistol, power pistol. That's 7.6 grains. And we got some gold dots loaded up in that and some of the extremes. 
then we're going to go a little bit lower pressure. Same combination. We got the gold dots and the extremes. We're going to switch up the powder. I got an accurate number nine today. I got really lucky. Um, 11 grains of that. Should get us 900 feet per second. And then if we kick it up to 14.2 grains, uh, we should be getting about 1,200 feet per second. At least that's according to the book. I can't get much hotter than that unless I went to blue dot. As you can see, blue dot would get us up to 1250, but I don't have any of that right now. All these bullets have been checked and rechecked. Uh, they all should feed no problem. I'm really meticulous about my reloads. So we'll see how these go, see if the different pressures, different velocities affect things. Um, one thing, if you have one of these progressive loaders, I really recommend get one of these Hornady lights right here. They uh, will save you from a missed charge, a double charge, an undercharge, or whatever charge. You got a branch stuck in your bullet, it'll find it for you. It's pretty bright. So uh, let's see how these do. We're going to start out with what it already liked that we ran before, and that's the hand loads. Extreme bullet, 180 grain. Sitting on top of 5.4 grains of tight group. We're traveling at approximately 1,050 feet per second. I'll speed this up, but I'm going to show you in real time me loading these things. back that was the 180 grain on 5-4 tight group so now next in the lineup is going to be something that mimics the feet per second what I have here is same extreme bullets loaded with power pistol so I got those and I have some gold dots that we loaded running both at 1050 feet per second again so let's load up a magazine of each and see how these go Extreme bullet, power pistol, going at 1050. And I'm being extra careful to make sure I'm not limp wristing anything in this firearm. I know it's possible with any shooter, but I'm definitely conscious of it today because I don't want malfunctions blamed on that. Power pistol is a little bit more fiery. Kind of like that. Down. Power pistol feels a lot hotter than the tight group. Supposedly going the same feet per second, so maybe we'll chronograph that soon. So it really liked those. No surprise. Let's try to get 15 gold dots loaded up. All right, let's see how these run. 180 grain gold dot going 1050. My gold dot. So both of those, it likes. So now let's back it down a little bit. Let's do the same combination. Extreme bullets on one side, gold dots on the other. But now we have this with accurate number nine, another different powder. We have these set to go at about 900 feet per second. They're on 11 grains of accurate number nine.
All right, 180 grain, extreme bullet, going at 900 feet per second. Did you see that? Did you see that? Them. And now it's raining on us. Alright, the rain ran away for a second. Let's go ahead and do the gold dot version of that 900 feet per second accurate load. It seemed to like the full metal jacket, copper wash, whatever you want to call it. I kind of like accurate powder. It's flashy. Don't think it'd be great at night, but it's fun. Try it out. All right, we got the 180 grain gold dots with accurate behind it going about 900 feet per second. Pretty light load. Let's see if I can get that to go ahead. It did not inertial load that time. All right. back it likes them now we're going to go in the opposite direction 1200 feet per second accurate number nine it's 14.2 grains of accurate number nine now seriously don't follow my load data use your own load data i'm not giving any recommendations on what to do here i'm going to load up two magazines just for a little bit of time saving it's raining on us again All right, 180 grain gold dot and extreme bullets sitting on top of accurate number nine, going about 1,200 feet per second. The only way I can get a little bit hotter with my reloading data is blue dot, and I don't have blue dot, but that would still only give me another extra 50 feet per second. I'm gonna start with the extreme bullet. So, this is the opposite end of the spectrum. And I'm not gonna limp wrist this firearm. We have a failure, failure to fully feed, or, nope, failure to fully feed. All those bullets were chamber checked multiple times in Lyman chamber checkers. They're good to go, trust me. Another failure. Emptied out, locked back. So, 1,200 feet per second. That's where we're getting into the problem zone. I already forgot I had this in my pocket. 180 grain gold dot sitting on top of accurate number nine, 1,200 feet per second. Handled gold dots. I'm gonna load five more just to be sure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this box. This is why each box has an extra couple rounds in it. I'm gonna put the full metal jackets stacked underneath the gold dots and we're gonna run the rest of this box out and we're gonna see what happens. We all know the rules about defensive ammunition. You never trust one magazine. 180 grain gold dot, and then on 
Uh, after that, we got 180 grain extreme bullet. Five of each, 10 shots total, going at 1,200 feet per second. So those were the five gold dots. Now we're back to the actual, what we would call range ammo. Pain in the ass malfunction. So that's a little bit odd, but we know that we can put 180 grain gold dots on top of accurate number nine up to 1200 feet per second. And from what we see right now, it can handle that one. So good, we've got one. Since we're going on something it likes right now, let's go back to what it did like the other day. That was the 10 millimeter Underwood, 100 grain extreme defender going at 1825 feet per second. It ate a few of these, no problem the other day. Let's see if we can get through a significant number of them today. These are the little screwdriver tips. It's still raining on us. But we're going to keep going because you need to see this information. All right, I almost have a full magazine of those. Let's see how they go. 100 grain extreme penetrator. Maybe defender, can't remember. It likes those. They're expensive, but it likes those. So we know we can run the extreme penetrator, I believe it is, 100 and grain underwood. And here's a little something different we're gonna do. This has been done, of course, on YouTube 100 times, but we're gonna do it today just to try to see about the low velocity um, recoil spring setup they have in this firearm. We're gonna run 40 Smith & Wesson. We're going to run Lawman, so we're going to run quality 40 Smith & Wesson. A lot of times you can run a 40 Smith & Wesson through a 10 millimeter and it will function. I'm not so worried about the feeding, I just want to see about the ejection. I want to see about the cycling when it comes to the slide reciprocation. I'm going to load 15 just for fun and see what happens. Spear, 40 caliber. Lawman, made the minute gold dot. Let's check it out. Spear Lawman, 40 caliber. Smith & Wesson M&P 10 millimeter, four inch. Let's see what happens. We're using the 10 millimeter magazine. Loaded the first one. Feels so nice and buttery soft. Okay, we had a stovepipe in meh, maybe a second to last round. Not to be surprised by that. Okay. Continuing on our 40 caliber adventure. How about some 40 Smith & Wesson 155 grain gold dot hollow points? This is an old box. Some flea markety stuff I found. But it is a gold dot. And it is 40 Smith & Wesson. Fifteen gold dots. Smith & Wesson 40 caliber gold dots. Smith & Wesson 10mm, 4 inch. 
see where it goes. Loves that stuff. So continuing on with the adventure, in that box of gold dot we do have five rounds of Hornady Critical Defense, 40 caliber, Smith & Wesson. Like I said, this is a flea market find, so when you pay five bucks for a box of ammo, sometimes it gets mixed up lots a little bit. This one's got two different manufacturers. Let's try it out. These are significantly shorter than a 10 millimeter, but let's see what happened. 40 caliber, critical defense. I'm not sure which grain. Let's see how it goes in the M&P 10 millimeter. One stove pipe. One failure to feed. And for our last 40 caliber adventure that I have for us today is this low recoil Federal Premium. I think it says 125 grain Hydroshock, could be 100, no, 135 grain. Hydroshock, Smith & Wesson 40 caliber. These are pretty low recoil. Let's see what happens. Federal low recoil. 40 caliber. Smith & Wesson 10 millimeters. Failure to feed. Fix with a tap. I like the rest of them. I'd say this gun's half of a 40 caliber. Let's just run another couple rounds of Spear Lawman 40 caliber through it just for fun. Spear, 40 caliber. Gun loves 40 caliber. So going along with trying to run as many different types of loads as I can through this firearm, I'm also going to go with some DG coated bullets. These have a tendency to not like to run in certain firearms. Sometimes they need resized. They just don't get along with a lot of different guns. I'm also going to run some Nosler custom competition. Those are pretty nice bullets. They're really expensive. I have a whole bunch of them laying around and I don't use them for anything. So don't mind shooting them today. Got the DG bullets loaded up at about 900 feet per second. Uh, the Nosler load I'm using an unpublished load, and I'm not sure where they're going. I'm estimating they're going at about a thousand feet per second, but I have to confirm it on a chronograph. Again, don't use my load data. Look up your own. It's getting pretty dark out, but I wanted to go ahead and put these loads to the firearm for this video, I'm trying to give you guys everything I can give you. I have a lot of luck with these DT bullets in 45, 230 grain. These run through my Colt Delta Elite. Let's see how they run through the M&P. 180 grain. So this is for you reloaders. Ugh, if I can ever get them loaded. Let's do it. Coated DG bullets, 180 grain. Moving at 900 feet per second.
likes them. Now we're gonna try my unpublished load. This is kind of an experiment. I'm trying to go low velocity with accurate number nine for the 150 or 55 grain Nosler custom competition. We'll see how this goes. Nosler custom competition, 150 grain. Going really light. likes them. It's an unpublished load. I think I'm going to just start running accurate all the time because of the fireballs. And since we're talking about this guy, MMP 10 millimeter, has a little bit of recoil to it, sometimes people develop a little bit of a flinch, uh, recoil anticipation. I'm going to show you a trick using this guy, Kiapa Rhino. Uh, it's the 30DS. It's a really nice firearm, but I'm going to show you a trick with this in an upcoming short video how to manage that trigger finger just a little bit better. Takeaways. Uh, a reloader, you can make this gun run, just tailor your loads to what it likes and have fun. Uh, don't let anything too hot. We figured that out today. It could have something to do with a little bit of pro bullet profile. I think it's got more to do with velocity and the weak spring that's in this firearm. It does like gold dots, like I said, whether it was 40 caliber that we were playing around with or whether it was reloaded or loaded gold dots. Uh, it likes the lower velocities. So we have Hornady Critical Duty coming. Uh, I got more than 100 rounds of that coming. So we're going to try that. That's a mid-range 10 millimeter load. So maybe it'll let those fly. If I can get a hold of actual factory loaded gold dots, I'll try that too. We have the other recoil spring coming. Hopefully that'll give us some improvement with the heavier stuff. We're going to rerun all that heavier stuff that didn't run through here. Uh, we'll run it through again with a heavier recoil spring, see if we can improve the problem. Um, it likes extreme defenders. It ran every one of those that I put in it without a hiccup. So maybe it likes lighter bullets. Brad Branch made a good video, and in the comments, back and forth, he was discussing you know, running some lighter bullets. I think it was 135 grains. Um, maybe it, he's had success with that. Maybe it just likes some lighter bullets as opposed to the heavier 180 grains that we're used to pushing out of the 10 millimeter. Um, All together, today we had more than 225 rounds, I believe, through the gun. Uh, total, more than 300 through the gun in the past couple range section, sessions. And uh, we're going to keep pushing more. It, it ate up those DG bullets. That was, you know, surprising. Another good thing for reloaders. So, if you want to see the recoil spring video, subscribe. If you want to see the critical duty video, subscribe. And definitely comment. I want to hear what your guys' opinion is. You guys are a lot smarter than me, some of you out there. So for sure, let me know what you're thinking. Let me know any suggestions, uh, anything you can, you know, throw into the discussion. And uh, subscribe for the updates. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.